It's been uh, International Women's Day yesterday. We've talked about uh, the pandemic and the impact that it has on women. And then, of course, we have that figure of 14 percent less for doing the same job. So I wonder, in 2021, how do companies get away with this? Well, actually, it's been enshrined in the, in the treaties since 1957, the, the concept of equal, equal pay for equal work and work for equal value. But something is wrong, obviously, because otherwise we wouldn't have that gender pay gap and that uh, pensions gap. So, so one, one step in the direction of, of amending this, this uh, uh, reality is to have pay transparency. So, so now um, employees can demand from their employers um, transparency if this this proposal for a directive goes goes through. But as I said, uh, it's 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 only one part of the of solving uh, this problem because this is a very complex problem, and we know also that that women uh, lose on the way in their career trajectory because of work-life balance, for instance. And, and or still, we uh, women do uh, disproportionately a larger amount of, of uh, the care work for for uh, children, for little children, for, for for instance, and and home responsibilities. And in the end of their career, they find that they have worked uh, less and contributed less in in, um, in in terms of their their contributions. And therefore, this will affect also their pensions. So it's 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 a complex problem, and we are addressing it. And this is. Uh, one one part of addressing the problem. And uh, commissioner, the way the way that this would work is, uh, if I understand it correctly, you as an employee can go to your employer and ask to see payments or or salaries based on uh, female uh, male gender. But you know, I do wonder. Critics say that the problem with this is that it really depends on companies and their goodwill and, and whether or not they want to be transparent. Shouldn't you be more aggressive, perhaps, on those companies naming and shaming them? Well, this is this is uh, a directive. It, it, if, if it goes through, it will be a directive, and there's, well, there will be uh, sanctions. But I must say that uh, during during the the preparation for for this proposal for a directive, we had obviously uh, social dialogue. We had we had conversations and with with uh, social partners, with unions, with employers, and we could see that the employers who already have this kind of transparency. Are are doing um, very well, and their employees uh, have the peace of mind that that they are being treated fairly and and equally. So I think that employers will see that it is to their advantage that they give their employees this kind of uh, peace of mind, and they are happier at the place of work. But of course, uh, um, there will be employers who will who will not like this, and and that is why. Uh, we felt that there is this need for a, a directive, and therefore now they will, once the, the directive passes, they will have to give this information. And as you, as you know, uh, the reporting is on companies which employ over 250 people, uh, but uh, the asking for information is every worker's right, and it is every employer's obligation to give that uh, information, even if you are just employing five or ten people. Right. And, uh, and although the, the criticism, though, at that point is that you as a worker would have less uh, leverage than the, the person that employs you purely because of a, a relationship uh, of power there. But I do wonder, uh, when you look at fines, I know you mentioned that. Is that something that you see almost as a nuclear option, or is it something that you're not willing uh, to put on the table and fine a company for not paying equally? Well, then uh, um, this this fining business is up to the uh, member state, uh, but we will we will give direction, of course, on this. But uh, I, I would rather that that uh, more employers will will see and understand that this is a good thing. We are working towards a union of equality. You cannot have a union of equality when you know that that women are are working for free. Uh, for, a, for a part of the year, because 
This is what it amounts to. This is not equality. We want to encourage more women to enter the labor market. We have seen the disproportionate effect of the pandemic on, on, on women. We need their talents. We are wasting talent, and uh, especially when we see that there are so many women in education and training and graduating from our universities, and then you, you lose them. So they're off the radar for, for, mm. for, for, for years sometimes. And, and, this, and, and, and all this is is, is very discouraging when, when you see that you are not being treated equally as your male counterpart. So, so there is yes. more to it, even the discourse, the public discourse, the fact that we are talking about it, that we are addressing it. And I'm it's, sure it's that, that employers are realizing that this is 